Thank you for joining us today. We're going to walk through installing Juno using the Secure Delivery Center. The great thing about Secure Delivery Center is it allows you to distribute software from behind your firewall. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and actually do an installation that includes packaging up in Eclipse 4.2 uh, right with your own customizations and plugins. When you click the download button, you're going to be asked if you want to provide an email. You don't have to, though if you do, the benefit is you also get access to uh, certified bundle packs, and in this case, the Eclipse software pack for 4.2. That is, it provides the ability for you to install 4.2 onto your server. You'll receive an email at a few click. You'll be able to access our, your customized downloads page. On that page, you can expand out and look at the different software available. In this case, we're going to want to get access to the Eclipse Discovery Pack for 4.2.0. Uh, and we're also going to get access to the Eclipse Standard IDEs. That is providing the ability for you to use the Eclipse Standard IDEs such as Eclipse for Java, Eclipse Java EE, Eclipse Testing, all those addi additional packs from Eclipse.org right from your own customized configuration with add-on software. We're also going to download the certified popular software pack that provides you software like AnyEdit, FindBugs, eGit, all that cool extra software you want to be able to provide with your Eclipse. SEC then allows you to package that all up, get it onto your system, uh, and actually then have direct access for you to be able to manage your packages of Eclipse, and even if you want, share them with your team members. So the nice part is it has an integrated portal. You'll package up your Eclipses and you'll see them there, um, all with your tailored software. Now, once the install is finished, you may have noticed that we've sped up the actual download process since it can be a little boring watching downloads. We're going to jump over to our downloads folder where we're able to actually install the software. Now, the first thing we're going to do is install the Delivery Center server. You'll notice it's a double-click installer that walks you through the server installation. There is a headless mode on Linux as well, or automated install on Windows. And it'll walk you through a few simple steps. Are you running as a service? Are you, you want to using an embedded database or an external Oracle or MySQL to track your metrics and audit logs for your system? Uh, and you're able to provide credentials for your administrative user. That is the first user who's going to be able to manage the system. Uh, don't worry, you can always add more later, so choose one simply for yourself and you can again update that right inside the product when you're ready. That user is what allows you to manage the configuration. To do that you're gonna you can jump over first to the admin portal like we're doing here and you'll be able to see certain statistics uh, and information about it. This is actually a first steps page that walks you through what you need to do from installing the packs, the admin console, and then packaging your software. From the admin page you can also view current activities, access documentation, and other information that may help you. In our case, we're going to jump over and actually continue installing the software packs since we want to be able to actually package up an Eclipse 4.2 configuration with the software we want to use in our company. So we'll run the pack we've downloaded. Uh, it'll automatically detect the, where the server is, automatically request authorization from the server to install this pack, see if the dependencies or requirements for the packs are met. Um, in this case, it's going to very quickly go install the ability to distribute Eclipse 4.2 and package it up for use by you and your team members, uh, or potentially your organization at large. And then we're going to jump in and now do the Eclipse Standard Pack. The Eclipse Standard Pack is what provides the Eclipse Java J, Java EE testing reports, RCP and wrap, all those different packages of Eclipse you see on Eclipse.org, you can also see they're available right inside the Secure Delivery Admin Console that we'll get to in a moment. And the final pack we're installing is our Certified Plugins Pack. So you, when you get your email, you can download the same software, install it onto your system, uh, and that provides, again, not just the base Eclipse, but a whole collection of certified plugins ready for you to use out of the box on your Eclipse packages or to provide as a software catalog that you can then add after the fact right from the same server. We're going to go ahead and install the admin console. That is a management application you can install in one or more systems that connects remotely to the secure delivery center server. Uh, it provides efficient management of your Eclipse, as uh, sorry, as your, of your Eclipse packages, 
uh, as well as information like um, usage, usage trends, installs, uh, all of that. You know, what private software catalog log am I going to have? Again, we'll log in using the credentials provided on the um, on the in server install, and we can come over to Eclipse standard packages where we'll see both the versions of Eclipse we have installed. In this case, we just have 4.2.0, as well as the various standard packages that we have available to us. So we're going to base one on. Eclipse 4.2 for Java. Uh, you can provide any name you want. You can actually tailor branding, organize packages by groups for different teams, whatever you may want. In our case, we're going to go ahead and add some software from the certified pack. We'll add any edit in this case and find bugs, as well as take a look that we do indeed have the Eclipse discovery site installed on our server as well, which allows us to efficiently add any of that software as well to our packages. You can tailor more information like branding, policies, and even workspace configuration. We're going to take all the defaults right now, but the nice thing about policies is you can tailor how the Eclipse behaves, including maybe I want to lock it down, not let um, anyone add software. Maybe they can add any software. Maybe I want to provide bundled installers that I can take in a lab environment and install it offline. When you go to promote your software, you'll see I requested a license. So I've clicked that link and jumped over to our license page. Uh, on this license page, you're able to get an evaluation license for 30 days. That license provides you access to use the software, promote packages, test it with your team. Uh, and if you want, you can automatically then go ahead and extend, uh, purchase your license, loading it in and using those same packages, allowing you to transition from an evaluation into a full-blown installation of SDC for your management. Nice thing with SDC is the pricing is very simple. It's $100 for up to 10 users per year total. So it's very, very easy, very accessible for you to get going with your team. Now we can come back over and promote again. Promoting is actually taking the configurations I've checked into version control on the SDC server, uh, automatically managed by the SDC server, and make it available on the portal. Uh, in this case, we're going to have installers built automatically as it's our first promotion. You can read in our documentation how you can actually also promote just in-product rollouts uh, in subsequent promotions. When the promotion's happening, the server is actually assembling your package with all your add-on software, maybe your workspace, your preferences, all together in a package that can then be shared with others. When the build finishes, it becomes available on your system for installation via the portal. You could share the link on that portal to others on your team, uh, or you could go ahead and just use it yourself like we're going to do right now. So we'll go back to the home page of the portal. We can see our groups. In this case, we're using the default My Team group. Obviously, you can set up your own groups. You, you can actually provide imagery or other things for your group as well. Uh, I'm going to drill down and actually look at details before the install where I can see I have specific software on the package and do an installation. In this case, I've left enabled the web install flow, which will automatically do an install without requiring me to download any installers. Uh, I do have my watermarked installer as it is an evaluation install of SDC, just like you will see when you try it. Obviously, the watermark will go away. Um, and you can go ahead and install that onto your system. Uh, I'm offered 32 or 64 bit. In this case, I'm going to just do a 32 bit install. The nice thing about SCC is it automatically detects the architectures of your system. So if you have a, you can have a single unified installer for Windows 32 and 64 bit, it'll only offer architectures available to you. Now our install of Juno has finished, so we can go ahead and log into our workspace here, uh, and we'll see that we actually have an automated install of Juno with the customizations we wanted for our package. So you'll see when the workspace comes up, it's actually going to have a little pop-up at the bottom right. Uh, SCC gives you notifications about your software, in this case saying your software is ready for use, um, as well as things like updates being available would also be notified there if you have incremental changes to your workspace. We'll jump over to About, and we can see that we have our uh, software that we've added, that we have our 4.2.0 Juno release ready to go with our configuration. So at the end of the day, that's basically it. We're very happy to have you join us today on, on how to install Juno using SDC. Uh, we look forward to your feedback. We're very excited about the ease with which you can use SDC to deliver your Juno software. Thank you.